first lesson on market failure, we're going to look at one particular type of market failure, one that is known as negative externalities of production. To guide us in our introduction to negative externalities of production, we're going to examine the market for a particular good that in the 21st century at least has become a very controversial industry because of the potential and sometimes debatable environmental effects resulting from the production of this good. And that is natural gas, specifically natural gas that is produced using a method called hydraulic fracturing, or as most people call it, fracking. I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to look at some of the potential environmental impacts of natural gas production. You've probably seen the documentaries and read the news stories and possibly uh, witnessed protests about natural gas production in different parts of the world, particularly in the United States, where hydraulic fracturing has widely been used to extract gas from rocks deep inside the Earth's surface. Um, some of the pictures we see here illustrate some of the potential negative environmental impacts of natural gas production. What we see here are some examples of what we call negative production externalities. We're going to define that term first, and then we'll go to our graph and see if we can come up with a way to illustrate a situation in which the production of a good creates negative externalities. This is when the production of a good creates negative spillover costs passed onto society. These could be environmental costs, health costs, and so on. In the case of fracking, we have just seen several pictures and images demonstrating some of these potential costs of this type of gas production. How do we illustrate the negative externalities of gas production using a supply and demand or marginal benefit marginal cost diagram? That's what we're going to do over here. We've got the market for natural gas. I'm just going to put quantity down here in my horizontal axis and the price up here in my vertical axis. We're not going to worry too much about the actual amount and price of gas being produced because the purpose here is to analyze the potential externalities of gas production. We know from earlier units that there is an inverse relationship between a good or resources price and the quantity demanded and the marginal benefit is represented by the demand curve. So the marginal benefit of gas production and consumption is downward sloping at lower prices the world is willing to buy more gas. At higher prices, the world is willing to buy less gas. Therefore, we have our downward sloping demand equals marginal benefit curve. We also know that the production of natural gas is represented by the supply curve. Supply slopes upwards because of the increasing marginal cost of gas production. This was also introduced in an earlier lesson. So the supply curve here represents the marginal cost to gas producers. However, I'm going to elaborate a little bit and call this marginal private cost because it's the cost faced by the actual producers of gas. This does not include environmental or health costs resulting from gas production. We're going to show the effect of those in just a moment. However, when we take into account the marginal private costs and the benefits of gas production, we'll come up with an equilibrium quantity of gas produced by the free market, we'll call that QE, at a price determined by the intersection of supply and demand, and we'll call that PE. And we have what we call our market equilibrium. Without consideration of any of the costs passed on to society, this quantity and price is what will be determined by the free market for natural gas. Gas producers will go out and produce gas based on the level of demand and based on their private costs of production. Hence the marginal benefit and marginal private cost determine the equilibrium quantity and price. So let's go over here and we'll define marginal private cost here. These are the actual monetary costs to firms of producing a good. These include of course the raw material costs, the wage costs for labor, and other inputs. What they do not include are the external environmental and health costs arising from the production of their good. When we take into account the external costs, or what we call the externalities arising from the production of gas, what we will see is that at every quantity, including QE, there is a cost borne by society which is greater than the cost borne by the actual producers of the good. So this vertical distance here represents the external cost, the external cost, or simply the externality. What are the externalities from gas production? Well, let's go back down to our pictures. Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution. These are some of the potential 
negative externalities arising from gas production, there is no doubt that these costs are borne not by the producers of natural gas, rather by society as a whole. Therefore, we call them external costs. The idea here is that no matter what the level of gas production is, there will always be external costs borne by society as a whole. So along this entire supply and marginal cost curve, we must add external costs to determine the social cost of gas production. And once we've added those external costs to the private costs, what we end up with is a new line in our graph representing what we call the marginal social cost. Over here on our notes, let's define marginal social costs. These are the total costs of production borne by society as a whole. They include the marginal private costs faced by the firm itself and all external costs, such as pollution and health costs arising from the production of a good. What we now have is a situation in which the amount of natural gas being produced by the free market, which is determined by the equilibrium of marginal private cost and marginal benefit, is greater than what we call the socially optimal level of gas produced, which would occur where the social cost equals the benefit to society. The intersection of our marginal social cost curve and our marginal benefit curve, our demand curve, tells us what the socially optimal quantity of production is. So I'm going to actually put another note over here. QSO in our graph represents the socially optimal quantity of production when all costs are taken into account, both external and private costs. Additionally, if the price of natural gas reflected not just the private costs of gas production, but the external costs as well, then it would be more expensive. So we can put a price on a graph at the intersection of marginal social cost and marginal benefit, representing the socially optimal price. So PSO, let's add that to our notes here. PSO, the socially optimal price, represents the price of gas if all costs were taken into account. Of course, by all costs, I mean both the private cost to producers plus the social cost borne by society, those environmental costs. Let's do a little bit more detailed analysis here. We know that the free market will produce QE units of natural gas. What makes this an inefficient level of gas production? Well, at that quantity, we can see that the cost to society, if we go all the way up to the marginal social cost curve, we have a cost to society is greater than the benefit that society is actually deriving from national from natural gas. So the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal benefit. You learned in an earlier lesson that a market is inefficient if marginal cost is not equal marginal benefit. While marginal private cost does equal marginal benefit, that's this intersection, the equilibrium point, the social cost, in other words, the cost of society as a whole when taking into account the environmental and health effects of gas production, exceed the marginal benefit. So whenever this occurs, we know that too much is being produced. Resources are over allocated towards gas production. So put that down here. Resources are over allocated towards gas production. Towards gas. This leads to a dead weight loss. What we see now is a situation in which the free market equilibrium price and quantity leads to a loss of welfare for society as a whole. This is quite in contrast with what you learned in a previous unit, in which you learned that the free market equilibrium quantity is socially optimal because total welfare is maximized. However, in the case of negative production externalities, there is, a, there is actually a loss of welfare resulting from the market producing at its equilibrium quantity. And this arises because of the fact that at QE, social cost exceeds social benefit. And our social cost is represented by this higher price. This represents the marginal social cost, whereas the equilibrium price represents the marginal benefit. So too much gas is being produced. We have a dead weight loss in this market. The blue triangle represents the loss of welfare resulting from the overproduction of natural gas. Let's put that in our notes over here. 
the blue triangle represents the loss of total welfare resulting from the overproduction of natural gas. If producers of gas were somehow forced to bear the external costs, the environmental costs, to pay for the proper elimination of their waste, rather than dumping pollutants into the soil and into the atmosphere, if gas producers were somehow made to pay for the proper elimination of that waste, then their private costs would be higher and the equilibrium quantity of natural gas produced would be lower. So what we're talking about here is a situation in which producers, the gas producers themselves, were forced to pay higher costs. What would happen is that the private cost, the marginal private cost, would increase, call this MPC1, leading to a lower equilibrium quantity. Now in my illustration here, we've got a smaller quantity, but the externality is not entirely eliminated in this case there is still some negative externality and some deadweight loss. In our next lesson, what we'll actually do is talk about ways that governments and policymakers and regulators can actually correct the negative externality of production arising from gas or any other good that creates spillover costs in society as a whole. So what other types of goods might create negative externalities of production? Well, you can just think of any good that results in pollution air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, erosion, deforestation, any negative effect on the environment or effects on human health could be considered negative externalities of production. You could say that coal-based electricity, fossil fuels in general create negative externalities in the form of greenhouse gas emissions, which could contribute to climate change and global warming. The production of many of the consumer goods that we enjoy, such as our electronics, our clothes, might result in negative externalities in the form of water pollution or air pollution, or even the exploitation of workers in the factories where those goods are made. The outcome of a negative externality of production is that resources will be over allocated towards the production of certain goods, as we showed down here, because at the equilibrium quantity, the marginal cost to society exceeds the marginal benefit to society, resulting in a deadweight loss represented by the triangle between the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost curves and between the socially optimal quantity, which was right here on our graph at the intersection of MSC and MB, and the equilibrium quantity, which is at the intersection of marginal private cost and marginal benefit. Here we go. One step